Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Chemical engineer. Not. Nailed it. (laughs) Continuing our series of helping people understand just what engineers do and all the different flavors out there. Chemical engineering is our topic for today. What is it, Luke? So chemical engineering... Off the top of your head. And what they do, off the top of my head, a chemical engineer (laughs) applies the principles of chemistry, biology, physics, and math to solve problems that involve the production or use of chemicals, fuel, drugs, food, and many other products. They design processes and equipment for large-scale manufacturing, plan and test production methods, and byproduct treatment and direct facility operations Holy top of my head moly that was impressive top off of my the top head. of your head well when i went when i was gonna go for chemical engineering just for right, fun right get I, your masters kinda, in it yeah i kind of was thinking i would you know that's how i got it wow that was impressive if you haven't already check out our episode on the impossible burger I bet there's a lot of chemical engineering that went into that. So you know me. I'm like a big video watcher, so I know how to pronounce things. Yes. So uh, the Impossible Burger joint, everybody working there was a a chemical engineer or a chemist. So they were The place where you order... No, 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 where they produce them. <laughs> I was going to so say, they were boy, doing... maybe this isn't no. a good career. No, they were doing like bloop, bloop, bloop with eyedroppers oh, yeah, bloop. and bleep, 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 bleep with graduated cylinders. Yeah. Interesting. You didn't know I knew the word graduated cylinders, I, did you? I bet you used those for something. All right. Let's talk a little bit of history, Luke. I didn't do any of the history, awesome. so let's hear it. George E. Davis. Georgie. Georgie. Georgie Davis, an English engineer, go Brits, uh, is create, or is credited with founding the field of chemical engineering late in the 19th century. Okay. And why is that the case? He published the first truly comprehensive overview of the practice in his, quote, two volume, which they say, quote, because it was like really big and apparently broken into other okay. things, the Handbook of Chemical Engineering back in like 1901 and revised in 1904. Uh, It's a series of 12 lectures that he gave at the Manchester School of Technology, which was later renamed to something else. So this guy's like the granddaddy of all things chemical engineering. But fun fact, you would think a guy who created chemical engineering must be doing some amazing things with it, right? He never taught another course in his lifetime, opting to devote his career to consulting. AKA, he was trying to make cash Making money. money. Yeah. Cha-ching, like cha-ching. podcast style money. Podcast you know? style. So that was an impressive. That's kind of that's kind of sad, actually. It is sad. Like this guy creates the field and then he's like, ah, I'm just gonna get rich. Yeah. I would do the same thing, but I'm not creating whole branches of engineering. No, you are no. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. That was hurtful. Sorry. Oh, uh, so I don't know what you want to get into next. I thought maybe we could look at the classes that you take. Kind so can of like we talk about? Yeah, whole, we could do that. Yeah, we could do the classes. The whole spectrum. I didn't of do it. any of that stuff either. Why don't you do anything? Because I, I, I have it wasn't this, in a video. So I you know, do no, no. I have the same formula for every time we do this, and that's I know you do that. Okay, so. fair enough. So let me talk classes. Then we'll get into what like. I got some things for high schoolers who are thinking about it. Oh, I got top okay. schools. I got industries. I got salaries, companies okay. that are hiring these people. So let's talk classes real quick. And I have a game, too. Oh, I love games. So for any of you who have listened to our what is civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, aerospace engineering a bunch episodes, of go check those out. But the classes are pretty similar when you get started in all flavors of engineering. So people actually write into us mistakenly asking for advice on this stuff. What engineer should I be? You know, tell me about it. First three semesters basically don't matter. Yeah. At least the first two. You're taking almost entirely the same kind of classes Identical. and electives. Uh, differential equations, calculus, all the physicses, some chemistries and biologies, all that good stuff. So then you get into the really fun stuff. Oh. I mean fun. The nuts and bolts. There you, well, not in chemical engineering. That's mechanical the engineering. The drips and drops. The drips and drops. The bleeps and bloops. Yeah. Engineering molecules, transport processes, thermodynamics, material science and engineering, properties of materials, lots of labs that go along with all of these things, physical chemistry, quantum mechanics, barf, process control, and tons of other like engineering electives, electives like bioengineering, biotechnology, environmental engineering, nanotech can be one that you take. I aced it. Luke actually took these as electives for fun while pursuing his 
third PhD. What's that, what's that called where you take a class but you don't get a, a grade in it? You're proctoring it? Not proctoring. You're, oh, yeah. There's a name there for is it a name where you just that. sit in on it and you don't get credit for it. Like old people do that sometimes. Yeah, like you. Well, yeah. You're old. So lots of things like that. I assume you also have to take like all the chemistries, like organic yeah. chemistry and all that stuff, which is apparently just the worst class. So let's say you're a high schooler. I and am close. Even before you go to college, you want to know what to do in high school. I got some. I got some help for those kids. I want to hear it. Help them out because that's where we're about educating the future, James. STEM, STEAM. That's a thing too. So, um, if you're in high school, uh, James had mentioned that you want to take upper level math classes, literally as high as you can go. Calculus. Calculus is probably going to be. Uh, I'm not going to a requirement, usually, but, but oh well, yeah. You, you should really try to get calculus in. You want to make sure you do advanced placement chemistry with a strong laboratory component. So basically, you need to be an AP student. You don't have to be, but it would really help like you. you. Yeah. Uh, biology, uh, physics, obviously. But let's say you're looking for some resources. You think you want to do this, and you kind of want to get a feel for it. There's, there's four resources. The first one is the ACS Chem Club. This gives hands-on opportunities to experience chemistry beyond the classroom. I like it. Next is the Chemistry Olympiad. So these are a bunch Ooh. of whole chemistry nerds. They get together every now and then. That's not what you say it when you're trying to encourage oh, kids to I'm do sorry. things. No, Luke. being Gosh. a nerd is being a nerd is cool. It is cool. Man. You're right. So uh, so this is basically a competition. So it's similar. They do this in a lot of other you know uh, classes and different topics. Uh, there's something called Chem Matters Magazine, which you can get a free subscription to, and then. Finally, there's something called Project Seed, S E E D. This is a summer research program for economically disadvantaged students that helps them through the summer learn all about um, chemical engineering and what it takes to get into those fields. So, this isn't just great for our young, impressionable student listeners, but also their teachers and professors yeah. that could if help them If you're looking out. for stuff, yeah. Do you have any links to help guide them to these res resources? I have none, but oh, I'm okay. sure we can throw them okay. somewhere. very good. That was helpful. So <laughs> what is it? ACS Chem Club, Chemistry Olympiad. Chem Matters Magazine, and Project Seed, S-E-E-D. I love it. Well done, Luke. I See, like that little I try, segment. I tried helping. That was very helpful. So how about we talk about some of the top schools that you could get into Ooh. once you graduate all those yes. AP classes this one hurt doing this one why because of how expensive it is you know this is a recurring theme with it a is. lot of our university things yeah so uh let's we'll, we'll, we'll see if we have the same list number one is by far as always longtime friends of the show mit massachusetts institute of technology the only university that invited us personally to record from their campus. I feel like we almost got kicked out. I thought we were going by to. Security. We got some weird looks. Uh, problem is, it's $53,790 I rounded that up to 54 Oh, my goodness. So you're And gonna... no local, like not... No, you... no. Yeah. Do you, do you pay that? In so so you're going to go four years, get your undergraduate. You are going to owe $212,000 in debt. <sighs> I'd go oh. 216. Oh, plus some, some. somewhere in that neighborhood. But it, it makes me an sick. Engineer. You're not it makes me math. sick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is gross. Cal Berkeley's next on my list. That's what I got too. 43 ish K. But again, we ha I this is one of my rants all the time. If you go in state, this thing's only 14 grand. If Cal Berkeley is an option for you, both to pay in state as well as you're smart enough to go there, yeah. you better be smart enough yeah. to know that you should be going there. You don't even think about going out of California. Oh my goodness! How stupid can you be? <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to. I don't mean to like be be crass, but like I couldn't get into Berkeley, and these people can get in there for basically. I free. rejected them. Did you? I did. That sounds. Like you. They recruited me the way they recruit athletes. And I you was were like, going to I was like, you eh. were going to play on their sports ball teams as well. <laughs> Number three, we got Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech yellow is jackets. Uh, yeah, the yellow bees. Um, <laughs> so the Georgia Tech is actually the most economically. So it's Very best reasonable. bang for the buck oh, in yeah. my book. So yep. it's thirty three thousand and some change out of state. Twelve in state. Again, you're a moron if you go out of state if wow. you live in Georgia. Uh, so how do you really feel about that? Yeah. So let's, so, so four years there, you're going to be, what is that? 66 for two. What's that going to be? Way uh, less than way less, like half of MIT. So, uh, and comes in at number three. Yeah. University of Texas, 
Austin. First off, you get to go to Austin, which is a pretty great city. Killer food. Texas scene. is pretty warm. Mm-hmm. A lot of students there. Great football scene. 38K. Only 10K in state. That's Man, that's, that's like they're almost paying you to go there. So how long do you have to live in a state before you can qualify? Because I, I do people do that? Too. Like you move there like a year or two ahead yeah. of time, do like your senior year, and then your kids can go to school there for yeah. in-state? Yeah, they have rules about that. Yeah. But I think it's a year or two maybe. It's kind of like politics. Like you can move to Ohio and run for office oh. after a little while. Okay. So that's something. And. I'm going to roll up number five because I got a friend that went to Stanford. Do you? Uh, yeah. Tiger Woods? No. No. Uh, Stanford University, again, 53000 There didn't seem to be a, an in-state, out-of-state price. So fifth best. So I guess if you can't get into MIT and you, want, and you have a lot of money, you just go to Stanford. Ugh, it's I disgusting. Guess so. so you know what? I'll finish off the top ten here in a minute. But you know that whole scandal of getting kids into school? I'm sure USC is a great school, but you have to pay that much money to get your kids in there? I'd expect Stanford to be on that list. Yeah. But USC? I don't mm-hmm. know. Okay, so the finishing the top 10, just because I think there's some interesting schools here and Big Ten representation. Wisconsin, Illinois, Caltech, Minnesota, so three Big Teners right there, and Delaware, oh, which I would have thought Mudcats. of. the old Mudcats. Sure. Uh, but Delaware, I never they've never been on one of our lists, I don't they think. They haven't. So I thought I'd give them a shout out. Okay, so before we move on, I want to talk about international schools for all of our international Ooh, yeah. listeners. Let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. I'm assuming it's MIT. It is actually the Mudcats of Delaware. <laughs> the Delaware <laughs> Mudcats. No, no sponsor this week, which is a shame, but we do have some shout outs. You ready? <laughs> we got... We got Alejandro S.J. Is he the guy that plays for the Steelers? He is not. That's oh. Alejandro Villanueva S.J. Oh, okay. Uh, this guy wrote a really long email. I'm talking like like this, <laughs> and so I haven't read it yet because I feel like I need to really read it and give it some thought okay. before I reply. Kyle, listener from Erie, uh, started listening on his way back from the Berg, actually. Nice. He was driving back up north to the snowy, snowy, snowy Erie. Anyways, he liked the biofuel episode, which just came out not long ago, and wanted us to know that his company makes fuel out of used oil. So that place smells like delicious, or in his case, probably not delicious smelling things all the time. You get used to to it or you end up hating it. Yeah, he he gave me an example. He said it ranges from like Taco Bell to something else (laughs) smells. So I don't think he's a fan. Uh, Dave C. Good old Dave. Yeah, he's from Michigan. So that's something. But it sounds like he has a whole workshop set up with like a lathe and a CNC as three 3D printers. He, like He should make us stuff. He should make us stuff first off. But I told him he's probably a better engineer than we are. Oh, and he's like, ha, ah, like you're funny. But I was like, no, like you actually are. Oh, I guarantee you he is. Yeah. So anyways, if you want to shout out like these three great listeners, why don't you email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. You could also hop on iTunes or wherever you listen and leave us a lot of great reviews, subscribe to the podcast, and, you know, just generally send us stuff. Yes. <laughs> I, I got I to gotta get Dave C. to make us some stuff. Yeah, Dave C., if you're listening, start manufacturing us some sweet, sweet gear. All right. Uh, before we move on to anything else, I wanted to go through those top schools in the world. Uh, so MIT, Stanford, Berkeley are all still up there when they're ranking. But the University of Cambridge in the oh. UK is up there. So, I mean, you probably you hear, turned, you hear Cambridge all the time. You that probably turned them down. The Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. That's a shock. Oxford, also in the UK. Again, one of those always, always named ones. National University of Singapore. Hmm. Un, uh, Imperial College, London. So, the UK is apparently very strong in chemical engineering. Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, which we've mentioned in another episode. Specialized in windmills. <laughs> and wind turbines. The Say it. Say it. Zhang Hao Yu in it. China. Nang Yag Tech in Singapore. And the Kyoto Yu and University of Tokyo in Japan. So if you're in any of those areas listening to us, probably not. That's where I would go. Those are the ones that we would recommend. Okay, so moving on. What do you want to talk about, Luke? You, uh, ne- you choose. So let's talk about some of the industries right, that you can it. expect to work in. So you've, you've put all this effort in. You've taken all these incredibly difficult classes. Ugh. 
and you want to go get a job. So maybe we could do like industry companies that might hire you and then some of the pay you could expect. Oh, yeah. I love that. So the industries are, and these are in no particular order, number one, because I couldn't find a ranking order. Uh, So energy. So anytime you think of energy, you think of all the processes that go into making things, you know, from solar panels to, uh, you know, anything that requires any type of process in manufacturing where, you know, chemicals are involved or materials are being heated or cooled or transformed or worked on, you're going to be there. Uh, Food and drink, that makes a ton of sense. Uh, If you haven't listened to, uh, make sure you check out our our Impossible Burger episode. Super good episode. Really good episode. Impossibly good. And everybody that I saw in the videos, because that's how I do my researches, Mm -hmm. uh, they were all chemical engineers and chemists. So uh, food and drink, oil and gas is an obvious one. And that's tied to energy a lot of these oil and gas companies they're trying to come up with you know alternative sources and alternative methods for producing uh pharmaceuticals pretty obvious one they're making the drugs uh plastics um is another one which i i would think that one seems like it would be pretty obvious but um uh, the next one uh what is that word even, James? Toiletries, Luke. <laughs> Toiletries. I must have gotten... Oh, so like shampoo. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking toilet paper. What, what do you need? Some oh, goodness. Toiletries. I like that you're like, I think that's what it says, <laughs> but that can't be right. I'm pretty sure it said toiletries. <laughs> so this is like shampoo, cosmetics, those sorts of things. Uh, and then water treatment. So, And that's just a small list. I'm sure there's a much bigger list. I don't know if you have any to add to that, but those are pretty much the main ones, I would guess. Yeah, I think you covered it pretty well. So before we get into the companies that would actually hire you, how about the best places to live? And it's kind of like, this is new. I know. This really? is a new segment. I, we never did live. No, but I liked it. Okay. And this, let's be fair. The companies are going to just match up with these locations, oh, right? So it's going to be Texas. <laughs> There's a lot of Texas in there. Yeah. So Houston, Texas is the top place listed. You get paid a good chunk of, on average, about $118,000 per year. That's 30% more than the U.S. median salary Ooh. of 90000 for chemical engineering professionals. And that's, like, ranging the years. And you right? know what else is good about being in Texas? You it's, get Franklin Barbecue. Well, there you go. That was the next point that I was best going to make bri- about it. Best brisket in the world, apparently. Is it? Yeah. Have you had it? No, I haven't. Uh, I don't know if I have. Uh, it's also very affordable to live in Houston. Oh, it is? Yeah. Texas in general is super but isn't affordable. isn't Houston a bit of a hole? Like, it's not, like... A no, super nice Houston city. sponsoring us soon. Oh, sorry. Like Austin's really nice. Austin's but very I, nice. I heard Houston wasn't. Eh. It's the fourth largest city in the U.S., so Houston? I bet it has a lot of very nice things going on. I'm there. sure, but yeah, it's probably very hot in mm, Texas. I don't like the heat. Beaumont, Texas, follows up next. Chemical engineers in Beaumont get paid about one hundred and nine thousand per year, o- over twenty percent above average. It has the benefit of being the second highest concentration of chemical engineers in the U.S. Yeah, who knew? Beaumont never who heard knew? of it. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, I think is how you say it. But I don't think that's how you say it. One hundred and eight thousand a year, and also very affordable living and Cajun cuisine. Yeah, and you love right? Mardi Gras too, oh, isn't that goodness. kind of Mardi Gras area? Yeah, it's pretty close-ish. I mean, a lot closer than Pittsburgh. And then one that I thought was really interesting coming in at four was Wilmington, Delaware. I never would have thought Wilmington, but it is the home to. DuPont headquarters, which makes sense then. It has the third highest concentration of chemical engineers, probably because of DuPont, and it pays $125,000 on average, which is way up there. What? Way higher. And apparently the cost of living isn't too bad. Okay. On the rest of the list, there were some interesting places like Kenwick, Washington, Lowell, Massachusetts, Knoxville, Tennessee, which shocks me. And even Philadelphia, PA, Philadelphia oh, coming in at 16. Oh, don't pick on Philadelphia. I love Philly. Pretzels, cheesesteak. You're an Eagles fan. Our boy Derek is there. Derek is there. Longtime listener. Good job. So that's uh, the places that you would live. Do you have okay. anything about the companies that would hire you? Uh, why don't we tackle that after uh, my rant? Oh, okay. I think it is good timing. Let's hear it, Luke. Yeah, so it, it's more of an apology than a rant. Ooh. So This is a first. Yeah, it is. And, I don't apologize much because I'm usually right. Yeah. That's so just true. saying. So you, you and I dog on people quite a bit. It's all friendly banter between, you know, colleagues, you know, chemical engineers and civil engineers. Like we Speak make for we make fun of T Dog all the time for being a civil and we make That's fun true. of triple E's That's all true. the time. So because they're the worst. 
I, I, I meet this guy. I start talking about the podcast. He saw my T-shirt, and he starts asking about it. And I told him how we make fun of civil engineers and electrical engeers all the time. It's not usually how I lead, the, lead well, off. Well, yeah. But. Well, it came up, and he and his wife are both civil oh, engineers. Oh. I told him we did the civil engineering episode, and he's like, well, did you talk to any civil engineers? And I was like, no, but we Googled it and Wikipedia like, Civils it. Civils usually don't know how to talk. <laughs> Bazinga. So it's more of an apology. So to all those double E's and all those civils and all those other engineers that we tend to make fun of and pick on occasionally, it's all in fun it's it's never meant to be except for triple except for ease double ease we mean it pretty much everybody else we don't that's not nice Luke. so uh so yeah, it's more of an apology so you know who you are if you're listening hopefully you started listening to the uh the show you said you would and if and if you're not then i take all of this back that was really good luke i think it was nice of you to be the bigger man and make an apology so for all of you out there luke apologizes for all of those things unless he's not listening i take it unless back. one person is not listening all right so some <laughs> companies that would hire you dupont who we mentioned is one of the biggies i saw they're paying about 74 to 133k and these numbers don't vary a lot but there's one biggie eastman 80 to 125. I don't know what Eastman even does. Dow Corning. I know that you're a big fan there. Yep. 76 to 140. BP. This is a good one. 60. Up to 174. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Dow. Also, I think, big Texas company. Up to 123. Exxon Mobil. 91 to 173. Bechtel, which shocks me. I know Bechtel is like in everything, construction I, really? and manufacturing, but this surprised me. So 78 to 121. Shell is a good one. 101 to 220 Whoa. or 252. I hey, don't know what hey, their range Shell, went, but HR, yeah. HR. Hit us Give up. us a call. Right. You have anyone else? Uh, so I, I didn't do numbers, but like... Oh, let's, oh you have uh, some good lists. BA, BASF, um, you know, Exxon, Goodyear, Tire and Goodyear, Rubber. Check yeah. out our, our episode we did on... Uh, didn't we do a How Tires Are Made, I we believe? We did, yeah. Uh, make sure you check out that episode. Uh, Texaco, Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, Merck, Pfizer. I mean, and this is just a small I see list. you have our boys that should be sponsoring us, PPG Industries. PPG, local Pittsburgh company. Yeah. And then you got Monsanto in there. Those are the folks that make that Roundup that apparently is the cancer's juice yeah it's not good no, apparently I, I mean the, if i listen to the commercials then it for sure it is, is not bad good for when me. i'm sure the commercials are 100 percent accurate and it's not just lawyers trying to get the monies lawyers wouldn't do that they right? would never do that yeah so some interesting examples of what people do as chemical engineers okay. you good with that yeah so the department of chemical and biomedical engineering at the university of south florida prestigious uh, undefeated football team at one point is investigating properties of this is so weird properties of prickly pears in the hope of developing what? methods for rural and undeveloped communities to purify drinking water. Apparently, the prickly pear is very good at water purification. Interesting. Yeah, who knew? So good job, chemical engineers. There's the John. There's John Young Man Kim, a chemical engineer at. Hengyan University in South Korea developed a new fingerprinting method using sweat pores. So that sounds kind of gross. That does. But it may be... <laughs> thank you. terrible. It may be faster and more reliable than traditional methods. Because okay. a lot of times... Like, there's actually some people that really can't be fingerprinted out there or so poorly that they can just go commit all the crimes. So good for them. And then Mike Solomon. And I guess he's okay. He's a chemical engineer at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, which we just drove by. We did just drive by. That was a by. nice drive. It was very nice. He's leading a team that's developing a method of controlling crystals using light and chemistry, which could make clothing or cars change color on demand. So basically turning your car into a mood ring. Yeah, I, I, I feel like... That's kind of neat. It's neat, but I, I, I would just... Do you know how many color-changing cars you would sell? Millennials would be like, oh, I need that. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't have an engine, but it changes yeah. colors. It doesn't run. Yeah. None of them have a license anyways. No, they don't. They just ride around in their bird scooters. Have to ask their parents for the yeah. color-changing car. <laughs> That's not nice. We love you, millennials. So I got a little bit on pay. Oh, I want to Spe Speaking it. of millennials, so uh, a millennial graduating from one of these prestigious universities should expect an average starting salary of about $68,000. Now, that's 
average starting. It can obviously be a lot higher if you were like a genius, like going to MIT or like you. Or if you're, you know, from the Delaware Mudcats, you know, you might be on the lower end, perhaps. Okay, Who sure. knows? Um, so that's starting. The median pay across the entire, you know, U.S., and this is Bureau of Labor and Statistics. You should check that website out. They got all kinds of cool info. Uh, is $105,000 roughly for the median. So that, that's a pretty decent wage. It's one of the highest, so right below... Um, What's the one we just did the other day? Aerospace? Uh, right below aerospace is where chemical falls. Aerospace, I think, was higher median than aerospace and then some of these other degrees that we make fun of and then mechanicals at the bottom. The workhorse yeah, of the engineering Lower than field. civil? I think civil and... Maybe kind of I think it depends comparable. on which website you sure, look at. Sure, that's so. true. Interesting. So, so a few things here about what you'd actually do once you land that job whole bunch of different options. I told you about prickly pears and fingerprinting, mm -hmm. but typically chem chemical engineers conduct research and develop new and improved manufacturing processes. They establish procedures for working with dangerous chemicals. So not only do you invent these dangerous chemicals, you then also have to figure out how you deal with them when they're used up mm -hmm. or even to work with them further. How to decommission them. Decommission them. Cradle to grave. Buzzwords. Buzzwords. Buzz, buzz, good? buzz. <laughs> Thanks. Develop processes for separating components of liquids and gases, for generating electrical currents, or controlling chemical processes. Design and plan equipment layout. So just because you're a chemical engineer doesn't mean you can't be on the mechanical side of things. You probably work with mechanical engineers on creating the equipment that then works on these processes yep. for you. So that's kind of interesting if you want to do a bothy. Uh, com equipment layout, conduct experiments. Uh, for all of these chemicals, troubleshoot what's going on with them, evaluate equipment and processes to make sure that it's very safe because this is a lot of dangerous stuff that you're working with Potentially, oftentimes, yeah. as well as making sure that it's safe and meets all environment or environmental regulations or that you have a way of disposing of it properly once it's all used up or you're done with it. And then estimating costs and all that good jazz. But a lot of it is around... Developing the new products, making sure they're safe, and making sure you can dispose of them properly. Yeah. So if that's your jams, then chemical engineering and if you're is for good you. And you're good at the maths and the sciences, then you're good. Yeah, maths and sciences. So I got a fun game. Do you want to finish with this oh, or do you have I, something else? No, I want to finish with a fun game. Okay. Well, hold so, on. First, what order do you think this falls in? If, if we can all agree mechanical is the best and civil is the worst... Where does this fall when it comes to, like, aerospace, industrials? I'd say mechanical, electrical. aerospace, industrial, chemical, electrical, civil. Wow. Okay. Very good. Okay. Here's the game. Let's play. I'm excited. So can two, I look or no? Uh, yeah, you can look. So okay. two extremely famous chemical engineers are Dolph Lundgren. The actor. <laughs> he He's a chemical engineer. The Russian hero of Rocky Yes, IV. he was. Depending on how you're watching the movie, he's the hero. Yes. And Jack Welch, CEO or was CEO of GE. I so didn't know that. So the game is, these are quotes from oh, these no. two men, oh, and you no. have to guess who it is. Okay. The first one. I have the power. Who used to say that? I'm going with uh, Dolph. Dolph Lundgren. What was he in when he said that? He was that? in the He-Man movie. He-Man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next one. You got to guess. That was He-Man. Uh, I've learned that mistakes can often be as good a teacher as success. I guess Jack. Very good. I'm nailing it. Ready? This. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. I need to work on the accent, but I'm going with Jack. No, I'm going with <laughs> Dolph. Dolph Lundgren. Oh, I was close, though. Control your own destiny or someone else will. Jack. Inspirational. You nailed it. Uh, number five, until the end. Dolph. You nailed it. I'm good Last at this two, game. face reality as it is, not as it was or as you wish it would be. Jack. Very good. I'm really good at this And game. finally, I must break you. <laughs> That's obviously Jack Welch, <laughs> CEO of GE. It's obviously Jack. <laughs> oh, oh, Dolph has a lot of good quotes. I did not know, like, 
I mean, until WSC like man? until like the internet, you know, became a thing, right? So back in the '80s, when I was watching, you know, in '90s, when you're watching uh, Masters of the Universe and Rocky, you just assumed he was this big dumb Russian guy. You Here, would he's that. incredibly smart, incredibly articulate. Um, he, he's done a couple of Ted talks. Uh, he, yeah. he, he's a really great presenter. So, um, I can't believe he lost the old going South paw trick. Really, <laughs> really caught up with that guy. Huh? Yeah. 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 Um, that's like the, the guitarist from queen or something like that. Isn't he like an astrophysicist or something, something like or an ele- electrical engineer? I don't know. But anyways, a lot of good people out there doing good things better than us. Yep. Hopefully you liked what we did here, though, and now are deciding to become a mechanical engineer instead of a chemical engineer. <laughs> if you liked what you heard and want to tell us about it, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Until next time. See ya.